Hi, my name is Dave Mosinski with Sly Incorporated, and in this video clip I'm going to show you how to properly change a diaphragm from a diaphragm valve. And in fact, if you have any sort of pulse clean or pulse jet dust collector, you're going to have diaphragm valves mounted to it. In this mock example, you can see that we have a single diaphragm valve mounted to a compressed air manifold and a pulse pipe, which extends above the dust collector bags and distributes the compressed clean air into the bags. In operation, an air tube would be connected to the outside of this diaphragm valve to a solenoid valve and in turn a timer. The timer will initiate the cleaning sequence which then energizes the solenoid to open up. When the solenoid opens up it releases the air trapped on the outside of the diaphragm valve, cups it open and allows the compressed air to come rushing through the open diaphragm down through diaphragm valve, down through the pulse pipe and blows or blasts clean compressed air into the dust collector uh, dislodging your dust cake. Now these valves come in a variety of sizes and shapes. The valves I have here on the table are all one and a half inch diaphragm valves. You can have a threaded in it, a uh, coupling, they come in flange inlets as well. Uh, another variety or variation is that you can have a single diaphragm, single large diaphragm, or a double diaphragm style with a primary diaphragm and then a small pilot diaphragm mounted above it. Now these valves here on the table are, you, are you, for use with um, a remotely mounted solenoids. The solenoids will be mounted either in a timer or a separate solenoid enclosure. You can also obtain these diaphragm valves with an integrally mounted solenoid valve. At some point in time, you're going to have to replace your diaphragms. Here I have a diaphragm repair kit that shows that you have your primary diaphragm, your pilot diaphragm, and replacement, replacement uh, springs. Now not all diaphragms come with replacement springs, but if yours does, make sure that when, during disassembly you know exactly where those are located in your diaphragm valve. And in fact, if you have several dust collectors, you should have several of these diaphragm repair kits on hand for all of your dust collectors should a problem occur. The example, the sample I have here that I'm going to disassemble is an ASCO one and a half inch double diaphragm valve. I've already, I've already loosened up the bolts, take off the cover, Note the orientation, make sure you note the orientation of the diaphragm itself with the, uh, this pilot hole. Remove the diaphragm, this actually happens to be a high temperature diaphragm. Take the new diaphragm, orient it in the same manner as the old one that you took off, but make sure that you do not touch this contact surface of the diaphragm where it meets with the, uh, the valve itself. Again, mount it or orient it properly. Replace, replace the cover, screw that back in place. Similarly, on the pilot diaphragm, remove these screws, take out the old diaphragm, replace it with a new diaphragm in the same orientation as the old one that you removed, and be sure that you keep it clean. Now, when you're doing any sort of maintenance on a dust collector or system, make sure that you isolate all of the electricals as well as, in this case, the uh, compressed air and bleed down the compressed air manifold so that there's no, no potential for injury. And by the way, make sure that you visit us at our website at slank.com for all of your air pollution control needs.